as can please stand for the last verse. You see him now ascending. Try this again. That working? Sorry about that. Thank you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. And we'll join in the responsive song of praise. <laughs>
pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, was taken up in glory and intercedes for us at your right hand. Through your living and abiding word, give us hearts to know him and faith to follow where he has gone, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Our scripture readings for today, these first two, uh, both focus on the ascension of the Lord Jesus, the first of which comes from the opening verses of the book of Acts, where St. Luke, who is the inspired author, gives us the fullest account we have of the ascension of the Lord Jesus. Luke writes, In my former book, Theophilus, which, by the way, is a beautiful name. It means lover of God, Theophilus. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days... You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. It's the word of our Lord. Our second scripture reading for this Ascension Sunday takes us to St. Paul's letter to the congregation at Ephesus. Some beautiful words where he once again refers to the ascension of the Lord Jesus, recorded in chapter 4 of that letter. There Paul writes, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves 
and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of our Lord. We'll now continue with the singing of the hymn of the day, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. The Holy Gospel for today is the last words of the Gospel of St. Luke, where we read, um, beginning in verse 50 of chapter 24. And it's speaking about Jesus and his disciples. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, so we have before us here, and I'd like to take a look at this very brief account that uh, St. Luke includes at the end of the Gospel. All this, of course, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This account of the Lord Jesus ascending into heaven. It's very brief, but it is a little bit unique in that it has one phrase in there that just, I don't know about you, but it just really jumps off the page at me. And I'd like to focus on that phrase with you. It's the phrase that the disciples returned to Jerusalem 
After watching Jesus ascend into heaven, they returned to Jerusalem, and here's the phrase, with great joy. It's very interesting. In fact, the Greek for that, you'll, you'll reckon there's only there are three words like there are in English, and you'll maybe kind of hear a familiar word in the last of the, of the three Greek words. It's meta, which is with, charis, which is joy, and then the third word you might recognize is megalos, great. We've actually brought a shortened form of that into the English. We talk about mega this and mega that all the time. That's this Greek word brought into the English with, with joy. The disciples, dear ones, returned to Jerusalem after watching Jesus ascend into heaven, not just with joy, but with great joy. And that begs the question, how could these same people who six weeks earlier had, were gathered with Jesus in the upper room filled with grief, John tells us, because Jesus had just told them he was leaving them. What in the world happened in those six weeks that turned that great grief into great joy? Folks, Jesus was doing what he had told the disciples six weeks earlier he was going to do. He was leaving them. And the very words that six weeks earlier brought them grief, now they're seeing it happen and it brings them great joy, mega joy. I don't know about you, but I need to take a look at that. And I hope that uh, we can do that in the next few minutes by the grace of God, because it's just an absolutely incredible thing. But I also, dear ones, want to kind of shorten that part of it just a little bit because I also want to talk about the Lord Jesus, who as he lifted up those nail-pierced hands and blessed his disciples and then began to rise into heaven, was also filled with mega joy. So let's take a look at the disciples first. So, and we got to go back to that upper room. Uh, the night before uh, Jesus suffered and died. So after Jesus told the disciples that he was going to leave them, he, he starts talking to them, John tells us, about some beautiful things. He says, I don't want to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, Jesus says. So what Jesus does that night is he uses a term for the Holy Spirit several times. It's a beautiful term. In fact, it's, it's such a rich and full term in the Greek language that you, you can't put it into one word in the English. And so if you're reading NIV 2011, Jesus will call the Holy Spirit the Advocate. If you're reading NIV 84, you'll read Jesus is going to send the Holy Spirit the Counselor. If you grew up like I did with the old King James, you'll read that Jesus is going to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. All of those words, beautiful and a little distinct from each other, and each conveying a facet of this incredible gift that Jesus is going to pour out on those disciples, this gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, he's a substitute for Jesus. Okay, the Holy Spirit's a substitute. He's not Jesus. He's the third person of the Trinity, not the second. And when you and I talk about a substitute coming in, a lot of times we're thinking about maybe um, some kind of athletic contest. And if a substitute's coming in, typically that means the starter's out, right? And the starter typically is up here, and that substitute is somewhere down here, not with the Holy Spirit. He comes in with his grace and power and does not miss a step. And all you got to do is come next week when we talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost to be reminded 
that the disciples did not miss a step with the Lord Jesus leaving and the Holy Spirit coming. And Jesus began to put a little flesh on this beautiful term, advocate, that he used for the Holy Spirit. Talked about the Holy Spirit coming and being with the disciples forever. What a contrast to Jesus just telling them that he was leaving. Once he finished his work, there was no reason for him to remain on earth. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. And among the different things that Jesus told the disciples that night concerning the Holy Spirit, he also told them, he called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth and said that when he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's a promise, folks, from the Son of God himself. To those disciples gathered around him, that night before he died, and 2,000 years later, that beautiful promise from the Lord Jesus is as valid and certain today for you and for me. And then St. John once again tells us that Jesus kind of began the process even before he left. In John chapter 20, Jesus appears to the disciples in the upper room, and not in the upper room, in, in the room where they were hiding for fear of the Jews, Easter Sunday evening. John tells us the very first thing Jesus did was he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And beginning that night in St. Luke's Gospel, in the chapter 24, after the visit with the Emmaus disciples, Luke talks a little bit about the Lord Jesus beginning to help the disciples connect the dots. Folks, that's a phrase you want to remember. To connect the dots. And in the blessing of the Holy Spirit, um, St. Luke tells us that those disciples already began to understand those Old Testament prophecies of the Lord Jesus of the promised Messiah, I mean, and how they were fulfilled again and again in the person and the work of Jesus. And then Jesus tells them, I want you to stick around because in just a few days, I don't want you to leave Jerusalem. I'm going to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, as the disciples go along with the Lord Jesus out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus raises his hands in blessing on them and begins to ascend into heaven, the fear, the despair, the sorrow that they felt on that first Monday, Thursday is already beginning to dissipate as the Holy Spirit in His grace and mercy works in them, the understanding that all of this was part of God's plan. And that in His grace and mercy, He wanted to use, in the power of the Holy Spirit, He wanted to use those disciples to be His witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus is gone. The promise of the Holy Spirit coming to them is hanging in the air. And the disciples return to Jerusalem with great joy and great anticipation. And if you know, next Sunday we'll hear again the, the story of Jesus' sermon, or Peter's sermon on Pentecost. And you will hear how the Holy Spirit took an unlearned fisherman and granted him grace and blessing in connecting those dots to help proclaim to people there in Jerusalem that day the truth that is found only in Jesus Christ, the truth that can truly set them free. 
and how the story then continues on in the book of Acts. Hopefully that helps you to understand a little bit how those folks in six weeks' time could change from great grief to great joy. It's all about the Holy Spirit connecting the dots. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to set those disciples aside. We're going to kind of come back to them because we want to learn a little bit from them. But this is Jesus' day, folks. It was absolutely essential that once he finished his work here as the promised Messiah, fulfilled all of the promises, completely carried out the Heavenly Father's plan to absolute perfection. So that the likes of you and me and anyone who comes to faith in Jesus Christ can stand before God the Father forgiven, cleansed, redeemed, restored, forgiven, as we used to sing in an old hymn. It was important for him to return to heaven. Very important for him to return to heaven. There's several reasons. I want to touch just very briefly on three of them. And I want to linger for a little bit on a fourth one. So the first reason was that it was important for Jesus to return to heaven was simply he was going home, folks. He was going home. And actually, he was just paving the way for the day when you and I will be called from this veil of tears to himself in heaven, when you and I will truly go home. Don't want to stop a guy from heading home. Work here was done. Going back to heaven to receive all the praise and glory that was due him as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. The second reason is he, what he told the disciples the night before he died. He said, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving. He said, because I'm going to my Father's house to prepare a place for you. And if that wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you that. Do you understand, dear ones, the joy in Jesus' heart as he prepares lovingly and carefully a place for each one of us, perfectly suited for us? That in tune, that intimate is he with you and me in our lives. And that joy filled you Make your Savior as you walk with him. Absolutely delights to see that regardless of the sufferings of this present life, your focus by his grace remains on him. And every, just take a builder's term, every nail Jesus pounds in that place for you, he does with a fullness of joy anticipating the day when you will be with him and all the saints have gone before in the mansions of heaven. And do you think he's forgotten you? He hasn't. St. Paul says reason number three Jesus is back in heaven again is so that he can take his place at the Father's right hand and are you ready for this? Intercede for you. Far from forgetting you, dear ones, far from leaving you as orphans. He hears your every prayer. And he takes those prayers and lays them before the Heavenly Father in his name. And for his sake, says, Father, hear these prayers. And the Father is so delighted in his Son that he does for you and for me. Three good reasons, dear ones, why Jesus couldn't linger on this earth but needed to return to heaven. Now, I want to take you to a fourth reason, and it's going to take just a little bit. It has to do with the very first vision St. John received and recorded in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is filled with visions. This is the first one that really sets the standard and the foundation for all the other visions that are going to come. It's in Revelation 4 and 5. John tells us that he was taken by the Spirit to the throne room of heaven. Now I want you to try to picture this. 
on this massive throne sits God himself. And John tells us every creature in heaven was there. All the saints were there. All of the angels were there. And then right next to the throne, there's a ring around the throne of 24 smaller thrones. And seated on them were elders. We don't know exactly who those folks are. But they're sitting right at the foot of the throne of God himself. And on the four corners of the platform where God sits on his throne are four what are called, John calls them, living creatures. May have been cherubim. We don't know for sure. Standing at the four corners. And here's John, privileged to be there. Then John says he looked and he saw in the right hand of the one sitting on the throne a scroll. And John could tell that there was writing on both sides of the scroll and it was sealed with seven seals. Everybody in heaven is anxious for this scroll to get open because this scroll contains the history of God's people on this earth until Jesus comes to take his bride, make her complete, saints above and saints below, take them to heaven to be with him forever. Everybody's excited about that. John says, I heard a mighty angel proclaim, who is worthy to take the scroll and open its seals? Now remember, I'll tell, I'll tell you in just a second why, but remember, John is down someplace close to the throne. So he's got all these folks behind him. And you can see him turning around and looking in anticipation. Who's going to come and take the scroll? Do you know who's there, folks? Let's just think a little bit. Let's put them in categories and let's just think about it for a second. We got the saints there first. Guys like Noah. Do you realize there's only two people in the Bible and Noah's one of them? who's described as someone who walked with God, he's there. Abraham is there. The only man in the Bible called a friend of God. David is there. How about David? The only person in the Bible described as a man after God's own heart. Esther was there. And that's just a very short list of all of the saints who were there. Not one of them worthy to take the scroll and open the seals. Like I said before, all the angels were there. John gives us a number. It says thousands upon thousands. 10,000 times 10,000 which is just a long way of saying countless. Countless numbers of angels are there, including Michael. He's called an archangel. Sounds like something, kind of a superior position among the angels. Gabriel is there, the messenger of God. Not one of them worthy. Then you got those 24 elders sitting on the thrones, around the throne of God, you have the four living creatures on the four corners right next to God. Folks, not one of them worthy to take the scroll and open the seals. And it begins to dawn on John. This does. He begins to understand that there's nobody there who can take the scroll and open the seals. And John tells us, as this settled on him, he began, the NIV says, that he began to weep. And weep. The word John uses there is a word that's often used for professional mourners in Jesus' day who like to shriek and wail at the top of their voices. Now, here's why we know John was down somewhere close to the throne. Because then he tells us one of the elders got off of the throne came over to John, you can see him. 
putting his arm around John's shoulder, saying, hang in there, John. Hang in there. It's okay. Look. Look to the doors of the throne room of heaven, John. And as John looked, he could see the crowd in heaven parting. And in through those doors, John says, the elder told him, here comes the lion of the tribe of Judah. Folks, it's the only time in the Bible that Jesus is referred to as a lion of the tribe of Judah. It actually hails, <clears throat> excuse me, all the way back to the time of Jacob when he was blessing his 12 sons and he spoke about Judah, his fourth son and the ancestor of Jesus in just this same picture language. The lion of the tribe of Judah has come. And beginning with the, the 24 elders and the four living creatures, going back down through the angels and now down through the saints until John says every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them burst forth into song. But you know what happens, folks? Instead of seeing Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah, John says, I saw a lamb looking as if it was slain, standing at the altar, taking the scroll and the song of the gathered people there bursts out, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you have purchased people for God with your own shed blood from every nation under earth. This, dear ones, was why Jesus had to get back to heaven. And why he could be filled with such great joy. As he took his rightful place, and as he took this scroll, and in the following chapters in the book of Revelation, we find out exactly in beautiful picture language, uh, apocalyptic language, the events that will transpire before the end of the age when Jesus, as promised, will return again in glory to judge the living and the dead and to take all who are still alive and looking forward to his return to be with him, joined together with the saints in heaven, to be with him forever. Joy, mega joy in the heart of Jesus as he returned to heaven Mega joy, dear ones, as the disciples here on earth, in the blessing of the Holy Spirit, had those dots connected one by one and would take the truth as it is found only in Jesus to the ends of the earth. Do you understand, dear ones, that the gift of the Holy Spirit that God gave to you and to me and many of us on the day of our baptisms, many of us, when we were infants, years ago, that that gift of the Holy Spirit was given to you for exactly the same reason. The Holy Spirit was given to the disciples. It was so that you folks could begin to connect the dots between your life experiences and the promises that God has extended to you in his word. He invites you to meet with him there in his word so you can be reminded of those promises he has, been, he has made to you. And in the good grace of the Holy Spirit, to help you day by day see, oh, in fact, Jesus does know. Jesus does care. 
Jesus does understand. Jesus can indeed sustain me through this day by his grace. He has returned to heaven. He is seated at the Father's right hand. But he has also promised, I will be with you always to the end of the age. And he is as good to that promise today, dear ones, as he ever was. There was an Old Testament leader by the name of Nehemiah. Brought Israel back, one of the returns after the Babylonian captivity, not the first, one of the other ones. Came back was uh, just a great leader, really helped to get things along with Ezra shaped up after the folks came back from the captivity and were just kind of confused and not really sure what to do. On one occasion, Nehemiah told his faithful people, you'll recognize this, you'll be able to finish it with me, and I'd like you if you would, if if you're able to. He once told God's repentant people, are you ready? The joy of of the Lord is your strength. Let's say that together. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's real joy. That's a kind of joy that you and I just don't experience every day. The kind of joy we experience comes and goes, right? Try and keep it around for a little while. It's, well, one guy said it's Kind of like trying to nail jello to a tree. The kind of joy that the Lord gives folks is the kind that can bring you strength day by day by His grace. As you focus on Him, keep your eyes fixed on Him, listen to Him in His Word, Fellowship with him through his people and through Holy Communion. And he promises, dear ones, that there will be joy, great joy, mega joy that will sustain you in any challenge of life. It's a cool phrase, isn't it? The disciples return to Jerusalem with great joy. It is a cool phrase. It would be real easy to pass over. God, grant that it becomes to you and me the theme of our lives. To his glory. Amen. Would you please stand? May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you now please to join with me in confessing our Christian faith. We'll use the words today of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. And during the offering, once again, please take one of those... uh,
connection cards that you find in the hymnal rack. And if you would, please fill that out and put it in the collection plate as the ushers come by. Please arise. We'll continue with the prayer of the church, which is a responsive prayer. You'll see that printed for you in the bulletin, beginning on page 8 or on the screen. We're going to include our brother in Christ, Neil Lillo, who underwent surgery this past week. We pray. O Lord, since your son has gone up with a shout and the sound of a trumpet, ascended in triumph and is seated at your right hand, so open our lips to sing praises to our King, rejoicing and living in the truth of his victory for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son has commanded us to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Bless the proclamation of your church that many may believe, be baptized, and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, preserve your holy church here and scattered throughout the world. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word and through the holy sacraments. And send laborers into your harvest. Enliven the love of your saints to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy toward those outside of the church. Quicken us in the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, today we pray especially for mothers in every home of every nation. We pray for mothers as they work in and out of the home. Give them peace in the middle of busyness. We pray for mothers of children with special needs and single moms. May they know our Father as a God of power and strength. We pray for expectant moms. Protect the life growing in them. We pray for future moms. Give them faith to trust your plan for them. We pray for those grieving their mothers and for mothers grieving their children. Give them your comfort, even through their pain. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over our brother in Christ, Neil Lillo. 
for working in him by your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to connect the dots in his heart and mind. So that as he approaches and comes through this surgery, he can trust in your promises that you will never fail him or forsake him. To him and to all that love him, we pray your grace and blessing. And the patience, O oh Lord, to understand that you make all things work together for good to them that love you. Finally, we thank you, Jesus, for the gift of all mothers who through history have shown us a little picture of your perfect and sacrificial love. Thank you especially for Christian mothers who have, been, who have made you known to us. We join together in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world and by his glorious resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink Jesus Christ's blood. And now, dear ones, receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
as you just end on a note of joy, you get to sing a note of joy there at the end. Here's some announcements to take in um, this morning. Uh, get you plugged in here at St. Mark as much as you want to be. All of you are welcome to come downstairs. There's Sunday school. We are also going to be having Bible class downstairs in the lower level. Just take a right. There's going to be coffee and treats and all that stuff down there, too, so you're welcome to that. Here's some other things. Um, first of all, um, calling all St. Mark ladies, you can see it here in the bulletin, there is a ladies' fellowship event coming up. You can text in our call, Emily Holtzeder, and there's a phone number there for that. And the date, just real, want to be real clear, take that pen out of your... Uh, out of your pew rack there if you need this. But it's going to be May 20, May 30th, May 30th, not May 23rd, May 30th at 6 p.m. A couple other things here. There is a fundraiser for our school over at the Savior that you can participate in if you'd like. There's a slide for that in the Welcome Center on the, on the back table at the left. It's got a black tablecloth on it, and you can grab that Buffalo Wild Wings. They're going to donate 15% of the total bill, and that's May 13th. Teen fellowships coming up at Wild Zone on June, in, uh, in June on June 2nd, 4 p.m. That's for 7th and 12th graders, so you can make note of that, those of you who might be involved in that. And one last thing, I want to just ask you guys to pray for something. We're going to be doing a major outreach book here at St. Mark over the summer, and you're going to be coming, you're going to be hearing more about that. Some of you are going to tap you on the shoulder because you put on your spiritual gift you're interested in canvassing, you're interested in doing evangelism, so we want to let you know that that's coming, and I uh, just want you to be praying about that and uh, asking God to reach people here through us right here in Mankato, so that's coming up um, real quick here, and hopefully right in time for Pentecost, Pentecost is next week, we're going to be starting a brand new sermon series called Tent, and the first week we're going to be talking about the, how Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, what that looks like in our lives. And um, that's going to be encouraging us into that as well. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Happy Mother's We all have mothers. Um, thank God for it. Happy Mother's Day. Um, God be with you all. Thank you.